Hi, David Bizard here, and you're watching Paratech 10. In this episode, we are going to focus on rule number one, which is find out where the greatest restriction is and work on that first. I think this is a very important rule because I see so many videos on YouTube where the pinch point is assumed to be the restriction in the system. And the first thing our amateur headporters do is dive in with the grinder and grind out that apparent restriction. Well, I've got news for you. You're doing it all wrong. Quickly, here they are again. Locate the point of greatest restriction and work on that first. Let the air move the way it wants to, not the way you think it should. Air is heavier than you think. Keep up port velocity and avoid redundant cross-sectional areas. Mix your motion, swirl, tum swirl or tumble or a combination of both is important. Do not ignore it. And last but not least, shape is all important. A shiny finish is not. This is the one we are going to concentrate on in this episode, but it may take more than just one episode. So we'll have episode one, A, B, C, etc. Right, so let's make a move on this. This is what we have to get the best results from. So let's see how that looks in practice. The air goes in here and the exhaust comes out here. And between here and here, we mix fuel with the air, burn it in the engine, and hopefully get the best result. This is what we're looking for here. So, what is the greatest restriction to the gases going through the engine? Well, it's not the intake system, nor is it the exhaust. It's this pesky intake valve just here. And that's a problem that we need to address first before anything else. Because at the end of the day, the engine is only as good as the intake valve's capability of passing air. Here is our starting point. Locate that most resistive point to flow and work from there. What we're going to do is compartmentalize the port. Now this is a real cylinder head here. This is a cross section of a 186 Chevy, small block Chevy casting, right? Um, that would be about a 1960 something or other head. Uh, it was a small chamber head and it was considered to be one of the higher performance heads of the day. Now, what I've done here is compartmentalized it. What we're going to do is we're going to cut through here and here and flow this, this and this separately to see how much they flow. So let's move along and see what that is. Right, section A, high flow efficiency. The pinch point is about here, right? Now, I did these tests when 25 inches was the standard, right? So we've got to, uh, uh, to bring them up to a 28 inch standard uh, pressure drop, we have to uh, multiply by uh, uh, 1.06. So this, 300 here would be 318 uh, CFM. So there we go, 318 CFM for that section there at 28 inches, or 300 for uh, uh, 25 inches. Let's move along. Section two, the turn into the, uh, uh, seat here right now all of our sections had a lead-in on the entry here to get rid of the edge effect right on the outlet they were just left 
to go straight into the bench. So this was 200 CFM or 212 CFM at 28 inches, that's 200 at 25, 212. Right, so let's go to the next one. Section C, 140 at 28 inches, 151 at, sorry, 140 at 25 inches, 151 at 28 inches. Now this valve here is lifted about a half an inch. I, I'm pretty sure it was half an inch, it looks like it, right? No work was done on the seat or the valve, right? This was as per a stock 186 Chevy uh, casting. At this right. point, we have to ask the question, just how important are the seats and the valve profiles? At what point do they become insignificant? We can see how important they are by looking at a computational fluid dynamics uh, diagram of a high performance uh, cylinder head. So let's do that right now. What you see here is a cross section of the intake port of a high performance slash race uh, cylinder head. Here we've got a valve about 2.2 inches diameter and it's been lifted 150 thousandths off the seat. These red zones here are where the port is, or the airflow is very busy. It's traveling at something like 450 feet per second in this red zone. In the blue zone here, it's more like 150 feet per second. You'll notice that the air is already starting to track towards the long side. Now, if this valve seat is important, what we should see is a busy area here throughout the valve lift. So let's just check that. Here is the valve at approaching full lift. You'll notice there's still a busy area there and there and there. Nowhere else in the port are we seeing this. There is an emphasis on a track down there. You can see that it's not flowing much here and it isn't flowing much here. Here's the valve at full lift. Now we definitely can see a consistent path down there. But look, the valve seat is still a busy area, right? So this here, and also look here, we don't have much flowing here. Off the short side, there, we have only about 150, 160 feet a second. The long side here, 450, maybe a shade more. So, this area here is our first priority. And that should be an undisputed fact now. So let's look and see what we can do to... Uh, uh, oh, I want you to remember you are looking at a race prepped head already and the problem still persists. So just imagine what it's like on our stock factory production line casting. It's going to be a lot worse. Well, it's all very well trying to relate to uh, race prep cylinder heads as we start off our investigations here. So let's look at something that's a little more in tune with the heads that you and I may be dealing with to modify our street motors. Here are two representative areas of a Vortec, a stock factory Vortec head. This here, which is a 2.1 diameter circle, represents the area and efficiency of the pinch point of a Vortec port. This here, 1.61 inches diameter, represents the area and efficiency of the valve at full lift, right? Why are so many people focusing on enlarging this here and completely ignoring this? They shouldn't be. 
let's look into that. Accepting that the intake valve is the primary resistance to flow, what options do we have to improve the situation? There's two. We're going to answer this question. And here are the two answers concerned. We make the intake valve bigger and we make it more efficient. However, there's a limit on how big we can make it. It has to fit within the cylinder. So, making it efficient becomes, how shall I say, the last resort. Once we've reached the size, the biggest size that will go in there, we have to hunt for efficiency. It would be fair to say then that everything starts at the valve seat. These two circles here represent the valve seat and the valve seat throat. To get the best out of a given diameter of valve, we have to allocate diameter here, the inner diameter, the throat diameter, that relates in a ratio to the outer one. Back in about 1969, maybe 68, in the first cylinder head book that I wrote, I put in the figures that I had found up to date, up to that date. And basically this was 91%. But I said it could be as small as 88% or as big as maybe 92 or 93%. What you see here is a valve seat which is concentric. The throat, the inner diameter and the outer diameter are concentric. Now remember, we had a situation where more air was flowing on one side of the port than the other. Let's say the port comes in from over here, like this. What we have is a, a lot of air flowing here, but not much here. So, if we're going to take this percentage throat deal in any serious manner, we have to say that basically the throat of the port here needs to be offset toward the manifold face because th this section of it here is much more important than this section here. There's not much air flowing on this side at high lift. Port coming in that way that is, but on this side there is. So we need a bigger radius here than on here. Nobody ever talks about that. Let us see how this all works out in practice. Big block cylinder head. Highly critical on flow. Plenty of cubes, not enough cylinder head, so the intake valve becomes hypercritical. What we've got here is a 24 degree uh, head, you know, the pretty much the stock angle, and a, about as big a valve as you can get in with this combination is this 2.3. Notice the gaps, not much there. So this Ferreira 2.3 valve, if we had 91% throat diameter compared with the valve, that is the diameter across here, I usually measure it just at the bottom of the valve seat insert, should be 2 inches and 93 thousandths. Now, if you're really good and you research your seat work, right, that number can be uh, increased. But you've got to know the seats. So my advice is to anybody who's doing a cylinder head where they don't get to experiment or anything like this is just do a plain 91% across here. In fact, if you want to be on the safe side, you can go down as low as 88%. Now, once we get a hang of doing the seats, what we want on the big side here is an easier path for it to come around than on here because not much air is coming around here and a lot wants to come around here. So we cut a seat here that favors this side. Now this is how I do it, right? I cut a 91% uh, hole here, right? And I blend this in so that from the center of the valve to here, it's 91% of the radius. But from the center of the valve here out to here, it's more like 93%. So 
and then it, by the time it gets around to here it's like that, that's about 91% here and about 92% there so what I do is I blend the bottom of the seat around here to suit the flow pattern at high lift that occurs on that side of the valve now we're getting complicated here and this might be out of uh, how should I say, the expectations of a, a beginner head porter. So that brings me back to my original deal. 91%. Make it easy for yourself. Make it safer and easy for yourself. 90%. Right, so there we go. Well, that brings us to the end of rule number one, shoot A, right? We're going to have to do probably two more on this, but we should have an idea now of where we start, and that's going to be the valve seat. So uh, what I want you to do now is, um, oh, it's very difficult. You'll have to try very hard on this, is to like, subscribe, and notify, right? That's so that you know when part two comes up. In part two, we are going to be looking at the bowl and why it is so important next to the valve seat well it's combined with the valve seat actually it's the most important thing that you need to understand so let's see you on the next episode thank you